It was a summer of wild weather in parts of the country, so now with winter on the way, are we in for a wild one or a mild one here in western PA? Chief Meteorologist Jeff Rosella knows the answer. And he's here now with his annual winter weather forecast. Jeff. Yes, anxiously awaited and anticipated. <laughs> First, we're going to go back to last winter because it was a winter we might want to relive. It, if you like cold and snow, last winter was not for you. Matter of fact, in all five months, November through March last year, temperatures were above average. And in all five months, we featured at least one record high temperature. Now, when it did snow, last year. It didn't stick around very long. You might remember it might have snowed and then melted within a day or two. Total snowfall for the season was 32 inches, which is almost 10 inches below average for an entire season. So it's time for the million dollar question. What's in store this winter? The mostly mild demeanor of old man winter last year was driven by big influences. The most analyzed ocean water temperatures and the most publicized the phenomenon known as La Nina and El Nino. I recently traveled to AccuWeather and State College where they're constantly monitoring weather patterns. You know, La Nina and El Nino over the past several years have gotten a lot trickier. It seems like it doesn't always work the way it's supposed to work, especially, for example, last year. Which was a La Nina season. And guess what? It's back. NOAA has predicted another weak La Nina this winter, but for us, the end game should be a bit different. This year, we think weak La Nina may actually uh, be a little more behaved, uh, what it's supposed to do. That influence alone would make for a colder and snowier winter than last year. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. We spend months ahead looking at things, looking how things change, and then comparing that to other years. So how do hours and hours of research into dozens of different global weather signals translate to our local pattern this year? I expect more of those kind of clipper style systems to come down. And usually those kind of systems bring more frequent, not major snow events, but more frequent snow events to places in the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and Western Pennsylvania. So given that projected setup and comparing it to similar patterns from years past, here's what I expect for our winter. Up first, my monthly mean temperature outlook. The season should start in November with near average temperatures around 43 degrees with a couple quick shots of colder air. December should be warmer than average at around 33 degrees with fast moving fronts providing brief but more noticeable cold shots. The invasion of cold air will increase in January, which will likely be the coldest month of the season with the biggest below average temperature departure near 26 degrees. February looks to bring occasional thaws combined with some late winter chill to make temperatures likely ending the month near average around 31 degrees. And finally, March will come roaring in with an early month chill, then a flip of the script to more spring-like temperatures by the end of the month, but still a little below average at around 39 degrees. In the end, no surprise, January will be the coldest month. And it will likely be a slow climb out of winter in March with a lingering chill the first half of the month. Overall, the season will end with temperatures very close to average, but colder than last year. Now, on to the flying flakes. Snow season will start a little slow in November with three and a half inches expected. Then snow amounts and frequency of snow events will increase in December with 10 and a half inches pushing snow totals above average by the end of the year. In January, the pattern should become colder and more active, which will lead to higher accumulation potential, around 13 inches. February should bring a relative lull in the storm track, but a couple of healthier systems will bring snowfall for the month to near normal at around 11 inches. In March, the extension of the winter chill early in the month will keep the flakes flying the first couple of weeks with near normal accumulation of seven and a half inches for the month. So over the next five months, a good snow shovel and four wheel drive will likely come in handy. I predict a season total of 45.5 inches, which is 13 and a half inches more than last year. And it is more than the average of 40 inches for the season. So to recap, one of five months, January will have significantly below average temperatures with the other four near or above normal. So the overall season will end with temperatures close to average, but 
colder than last year. And after a light season last year, this season, snow starts to swing back above average with a pattern favoring more frequent clipper type systems. So a question at the end of the day, how will this impact you? Now, last winter was pretty mild, so home heating costs are going to be higher than they were last year. You can plan on that. Having a solid snow shovel is recommended any winter, but especially since we're going to have about 13 inches more snow this winter versus last winter. School delays look likely, especially in January. That's the month I've kind of circled to, to get the most snow and have our coldest weather. And after a slow start to ski season, I think it could get a little slow out of the gates. I think by the time we get to the holidays and beyond, things will start to pick up. So you'll get more bang for your ski pass this year in the months of January and February versus last year. Uh, so there is good news about that. So kind of breaking it all down for you. I think we've kind of put everything together. Well, do you guys have any questions about what? Well, I have a comment. Uh, okay. you, you've made my son very happy with the idea of more school delays. Yes. January especially. They're not to say they couldn't happen. And right. a better ski season. It, it sounds like kind of an old school winter forecast, right? Yeah, compared to last year especially. I think at the end of the winter, it's probably compared to averages going to be very close to normal. I think temperatures, again, are going to be slightly above average, but not as much as they were last year. And snow will be just a bit below above average, not an extreme winter in terms of snowfall, but you compare it to the last couple winters and it may seem more extreme. Last year we had 32 inches, add another foot of snow this winter and it's going to seem like it's a lot worse and it will be versus last winter. Yep, it's all relative. All right.